This video will show you how to assemble the Rad Runner Plus. Photograph all four sides of the box and the label with the serial numbers. Make sure the label is easy to read and keep a photo for your records. Open the bike box and remove the small box from inside. This contains the owner's manual, charger, assembly toolkit, headlight, front fender mounting hardware, handlebar stem faceplate mounting hardware, which contains the top bolt cover, and then also the pedals. The assembly toolkit includes a nine box end wrench, eight and 10, 13 and 15, and 16 and 18 millimeter wrenches, two, three, four, and five millimeter Allen wrenches, an inner pad adjustment tool, and a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver. You will use many, but not all of these tools to assemble the bike. We also recommend using a pair of flat side cutters, a pedal wrench, a bike pump with a Schrader valve and a pressure gauge, a torque wrench with a set of Allen bits, bicycle grease, and a friend to help with the assembly. Carefully lift the bike out of the box and rest it on the rear wheel and the front fork protector plate. Snip the zip ties to remove the front wheel and fender and set them aside. Remove the packaging material from everything except the handlebar for now and make sure you don't touch the brake rotor on the wheel. Recycle the packaging material according to local rules. Start by rotating the stem and front fork so the fork arch is on the front and the brake cable is on the rider's left side. Make sure no cables are wrapped around the back of the head tube. Locate the bag with the four bolts and washers. This is the handlebar faceplate hardware. Remove the bolts from the bag and pass a washer onto each bolt end and then set them aside near the handlebar. Set the top cap bolt cover aside for a later step. Remove the packaging from the handlebar and snip the zip tie holding the faceplate in place. Set the faceplate near the bike for installation. Leave the keys zip tied to the handlebar until you're ready to ride. Orient the handlebar so the brake levers face forward and the three button remote is on the rider's left side. Trace the brake cable from the left brake lever to the brake caliper. Make sure the bundle of cables is not twisted. Place the handlebar on the stem as shown. Place the faceplate into position and thread in four bolts by hand. Use a five millimeter Allen wrench to loosely install the bolts. Adjust the handlebar so it's in line with the angle of the front fork. Use a five millimeter Allen wrench to tighten the bolts evenly in an X pattern. Ensure the gap between the faceplate and the stem is evenly spaced. Torque the handlebar faceplate bolts evenly to eight Newton meters. Torque the upper and lower handlebar stem clamp bolts to 10 Newton meters. Install the top cap bolt cover. To install the front wheel, first locate the quick release skewer holding the fork protector plate in place. Open the lever and remove the thumb nut and cone spring on the opposite side. Remove the skewer, keeping the washer and the other cone spring in place on the lever side. On the brake rotor side of the wheel, pass the skewer through the hub and reinstall the cone spring without touching the brake rotor. Both cone springs should point in towards the wheel hub and thread on the thumb nut just a couple of turns, leaving enough room for the fork dropouts. Carefully lift the front of the bike and lower the fork onto the wheel. Keep the lever open the brake rotor should go into the brake caliper, in between the brake pads, and the axle should enter the fork dropouts fully. If installing the front wheel is difficult, use a 5mm Allen wrench to widen the gap between the brake pads by turning the inner pad adjuster out or counterclockwise two clicks, then install the wheel. Check that the wheel is fully seated in the dropouts and that it's centered. Hold the quick release lever in line with the axle and tighten the thumb nut until the lever can stay parallel to the floor without being held. Use the palm of your hand to close the lever fully without touching the brake rotor. There should be enough resistance that the lever leaves an imprint on your palm. To install the headlight and the front fender, use a 5mm Allen wrench and a 10mm wrench to remove the headlight mounting hardware from the fork arch. 
Pass the fender from the back of the wheel forwards under the arch. Pass the bolt through a washer, the fender mounting point, the headlight mount, and the fork arch mounting point. Then install the remaining washer and thread the lock nut onto the bolt end. Use a 5mm Allen wrench and a 10mm wrench to tighten the bolt part way. Plug in the headlight connector by aligning the internal notch and pins and external arrows and pressing directly together without twisting. Locate the fender mounting hardware and place the fender arm eyelet over the mounting point on the bottom of the fork. Thread in the bolt by hand and use a 4mm Allen wrench to tighten. Repeat this on the other side. Check that the front fender and headlight are centered over the front wheel. Adjust by hand if needed, and then torque the front fender bolt and headlight mounting bolt to 6 newton meters. On the headlight, use a 3mm Allen wrench and an 8mm wrench to loosen the headlight angle adjustment bolt. Adjust the headlight slightly downwards so it will not blind oncoming traffic and tighten the bolt securely. To install the pedals, first apply grease to the threaded portion of each pedal axle. Identify each pedal by the sticker or by the markings on the pedal axle. The right pedal has a smooth axle and threads onto the rider's right side. Carefully thread in the pedal by hand, turning clockwise towards the front of the bike. The left pedal has grooves on the axle and threads onto the rider's left side. Carefully thread in the pedal by hand, turning counterclockwise, also towards the front of the bike. Once each pedal is fully threaded into the proper crank, use a pedal wrench to torque each pedal to 35 newton meters. Visually inspect the tires and make sure the tire bead is evenly seated around the rim. Use a bike pump with a Schrader valve and a pressure gauge to inflate the tires to the pressure indicated on the tire sidewall. Open the seat post quick release lever and remove the seat post. Adjust the clamp so it's centered over the notch on the seat tube. Apply a small amount of grease to the seat post and install the seat post so the minimum insertion mark is completely inside the seat tube. Adjust the seat post up or down to a comfortable height. Tighten the adjustment thumb nut on the clamp with the lever in line halfway closed. When you feel resistance, close the lever fully, which should require enough pressure to leave an imprint on your hand. The seat post should not move once the lever is closed. Snip the zip tie holding the keys to the handlebar. Use the key to turn the battery on and check that the battery is locked to the frame. Refer to the owner's manual for important details related to safety, maintenance, component adjustment, and torque specifications. Read it fully and keep it for future reference. To make sure your bike is ready for any adventure, we recommend getting a tune-up from a local, certified, and reputable bike mechanic within the first 50 to 100 miles of riding, as well as keeping up with regular maintenance. Work through the safety checklist in the owner's manual and check that all hardware is tightened to the recommended values. Test the bike fully before riding. Reach out to Rad Power Bikes product support if you have any questions and ride rad.